Hello, let's take a look at how I use the Expert Sleepers ES9 USB audio interface. The Expert Sleeper ZS9 is a USB audio interface in the form of a Eurorack module. It has 16 inputs and 16 outputs. There are expansion options and we will look at those later. It has a USB-C socket to connect to the computer or tablet. The host just needs to support USB 2 or 3. If you are running Windows as I am, there is an ASIO audio driver on the Expert Sleeper's website. The inputs are split into 14 analog 3.5mm TS mono jacks with the remaining two inputs allocated to optical SPDIF. The input jacks have a white background and the input SPDIF has a black cover. The input jacks are used to send audio and CV to your computer. The outputs are split into a few groups. There are eight 3.5mm TS mono jacks. Two outputs go to a stereo headphone jack. Two outputs go to SPDIF. A pair of outputs go to the left and right 6.35mm TRS balance jacks. The final two outputs are used for expansion with an ES5 module. The SPDIF and ES5 outputs are digital with the rest being analog. The output jacks have a black background and the output SPDIF has a white cover. To access the ES9 in VCV rack I use a VCV Audio 16 module. The driver is ASIO and the device is Expert Sleepers USB Audio. On Windows you will need to have downloaded and installed this driver. The ES9 input jacks are handled by the From Device section of Audio 16. Jacks 1 to 14 on the ES9 correspond to jacks 1 to 14 in From Device. The output numbering, however, is a little trickier. The outputs labelled 1 to 8 on the ES9 are actually configured as outputs 9 to 16 and so are accessed through Audio 16's two device section, jacks 9 to 16. The two device jacks 1 and 2 of Audio 16 go to the main outputs of the ES9 and to the headphones. Jacks 3 and 4 also go to the headphones. Jacks 5 and 6 are for SPDIF, and Jacks 7 and 8 are for the expansion module ES5. Expert Sleepers do provide configuration software to change the way the module behaves, including enabling and disabling input DC blocking, routing, and mixing channels for output. By turning on input DC blocking, the dynamic range for the channels is maximised. This is good for audio. If the channels are being used for control voltage, the DC blocking should be turned off. OK, now we've covered the essentials, let's look at the ES9 in action. I have speakers connected to the ES9's headphone jack. That means I'll be able to hear anything I send to Audio 16's two device jacks 1, 2, 3 and 4. In preparation for this demo, I've connected the from device jacks 1 and 2 to the two device jacks 1 and 2. So that means any incoming audio also goes out to my speakers. I have also connected those from device jacks to the VCV recorder. 
In the real world, I have an expert sleepers disting Mark IV in VCO mode. That's the leftmost module you can see. It outputs a sine wave from jack A and a sawtooth from jack B. I connect the disting jack A to the ES9's first input and we hear the sine wave and see it on the scope. Then I connect the distings jack B to the ES9's second input and we hear the sawtooth and we can see it on the scope. Taking this a step further, I have added an LFO in VCV rack and connected it to the 2 device jack 9, which corresponds to the ES9's output jack numbered 1. Then I take a patch cable from that jack 1 and put it into the distings X jack which controls the VCO rate. Now let's look at a patch to see some of the possible ways you could use an ES9. Here I'm using a Detroit sequencer in VCV rack and sending its pitch and gates through the ES9 into a real-world IntelliGel Atlantis module. The Atlantis module then sends its audio through the ES9 into VCV rack. I'm also sending a clock and reset into the ES9 and from there into the IntelliGel Metropolis. The Metropolis then sequences the disting, and the disting's audio goes through the ES9 into VCV rack. A third voice is handled in VCV rack only, but driven by the same clock. All the audio goes to a mind meld mixer, then to VCV recorder and to the ES9 main outputs to drive my speakers. It is possible to tune external oscillators by ear or with the help of a module like the entry and pitch and envelope follower. A more accurate way is to use the Expert Sleeper's voice controller module. It is part of the Silent Way plugin for VCV Rack, authored by Andrew Osler of Expert Sleepers. This plugin costs $10 US. It listens to the audio response to a range of control voltage and builds a calibration tuning. There is a YouTube video by Expert Sleepers showing how it's used. Now let's talk about expansion. The ES9 has MIDI support on its circuit board, but it doesn't include any MIDI sockets. They're purchased separately. I don't use that feature. The ES9 can be expanded by using an ES5 module. I have an ES5 to the left of the ES9. It performs two tasks. It has additional headers on its circuit board allowing for further expansion, and it has eight jacks that can be used for gates and triggers. To the left of the S5 I have an ESX8CV, which gives 8 jacks that handle control voltage. Expert sleepers also have an ESX8GT that provides 8 more jacks of gates and triggers. You can see the back of the modules on the screen now. The ES5 is in the middle with the ESX8CV to the right. It's connected to one of the 6 ES5 expansion headers. One of the headers is by default allocated to the jacks on the front of the ES5. To use the physical ES5 in VCV rack, you need to get the free virtual ES5 module from Expert Sleepers. It is part of the encoders plugin from Andrew Osler. The virtual module has jacks numbered 1 to 6, and they are inputs. These represent the ES5's expansion headers. The lower two jacks are outputs. If you remember I said earlier that the Audio 16 two device jacks 7 and 8 were for the ES5. 
the virtual ES5 outputs connect to those jacks 7 and 8. So you might be wondering how we get to use the jacks on the front of the physical ES5 since they're not present on the virtual ES5. The jacks on the physical ES5 represent the expansion headers. So what we need to do is add a virtual module called 8GT, which is also in the encoders plugin, and connect it to jack 1 on the virtual ES5. 8GT gives us 8 jacks for gates and triggers. If you get a physical ESX 8GT, you will also need to use a virtual 8GT. Similarly, the virtual 8CV module from the same plugin is needed when you want to use a physical ESX 8CV module. Let's look at a patch using these. First, we connect the virtual ES5 to the Audio 16 module representing the ES9. Then we need to connect the virtual HET to the virtual ES5. Unfortunately, before I do that, I have to avoid a bug that is present in the audio library that VCV Rack is using on Windows. If I don't do that, the Expert Sleeper's expansions do not work correctly. The workaround entails connecting a constant voltage of 1 volt or more to a virtual ES5 jack above the one that I actually want to use. In this case, I want to connect the HET to the ES5 jack 1, so I apply constant voltage to jack 2. In this example, I am using a Refto module for the constant voltage. Then connect the HET to jack 1. Note that as soon as I make the connection, the light on the first physical ES5 jack starts flashing. As I connect more clocks, the rest of the jack start to flash. The physical ESX 8CV is connected to header 4 of the physical ES5. Once again, to work around the audio library bug, I connect constant voltage to the virtual ES5, to jack 5, one above the jack I really want to use. Once that is done, I can connect jack 4 to the virtual 8CV. Then we can watch the ATFO cycle the lights of the physical ESX 8CV. Well, that's it for now. I hope you found something useful in this video and I hope you'll check out the rest of my channel.